Three celebrities, three wheelchairs, with one huge challenge, to travel from Edinburgh to London without ever using their legs. Over the next two days, they'll experience something of what it's like for Britain's three quarters of a million wheelchair users. I want to do the programme because I know nothing about the reality of being a disabled person, what it really is like sitting in a chair for your entire life. And I won't know that, but I'm going to get an idea and an insight. I just like challenges, really. I just feel like it's going to be tough. I'm much more aware since knowing I was going to do this programme of how unaccessible everywhere seems to be. To make sure they don't accidentally use their feet, their legs will be loosely strapped together. What does that feel like? Oh, all right. Before they go anywhere, Jill Fox, a member of the Great Britain wheelchair basketball team, shows them some basic techniques. Travelling with them to help keep them safe are Prav, Rachel and Lindsay, who've all worked and trained with people who spend their lives in wheelchairs. Watch your curve, there's a curve there. I'm stuck. I just can't understand how we're going to go up and down these curves. I have a feeling I'm going to go and then push up. That, yeah, it. but you did that, though. Yeah. Well, you were never going to get To make sure they face some of the frustrations and challenges of daily life in a wheelchair, there'll be planes, trains, buses and taxis to cope with on their separate routes. And there'll be hard lessons to learn. He's completely ignored your purpose here. The taxi man saw us and he had his light on. But he decided he didn't want us, I think, because he basically looked at us and then just ignored us. She tries for a second time. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my... That is unbelievable. He turned his light off. He saw me, looked at me and just turned his light off. So, are they ready for the challenge? I know I'll make it. I might not be the first. I'll probably be the last. I'm not very fast, but I'll beat them, will not Absolutely determined. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm determined to do it. There are many types of wheelchair and many kinds of disability, but the problem of how accessible our towns, cities and transportation systems are, if you live in one of these, are universal. Our celebrities have got to come to terms with whatever challenges they face. Their journeys will begin as the daily one o'clock gun is fired from the ramparts of Edinburgh Castle above them. Get right, me. Listen up, gang, I've got a bag here for each of you. There's one for you, Gabby, one for you, Talia, and one for you, Sean. Now, in those bags, you'll find some useful bits and bobs you're going to need over the next couple of days. Also, you'll find your roots and your challenges on a piece of card in there. Now, I'll expect to see all three of you tomorrow at the south side of the Millennium Bridge at five o'clock in London. Do you expect to? I expect <laughs> to. If I can get you into your chairs, that'd be great. So, uh, good luck, everyone. I hope it goes well for you. Thanks. Thank you. Here you go, everyone. <laughs> Can I come to the See you, suckers. Bye. Bye. See you, Sean. Tell See you. Thank you. Bye. Over the next 24 hours, they'll discover just how accessible and wheelchair friendly our towns and cities really are. that you climbed as a child, which I did. Tani is going on a flight to Bristol and then on to Abercavenny in Wales, where she spent her holidays as a child. Sean's off to a familiar place too. He'll be flying to Dublin, where he's planning to go and see a rock band. Gabby's route to London by train will include a visit to a football match in Bolton and a night in a hotel that's a benchmark for disabled access. There is a flat away out the gardens, but they've all started to take the route that looks the quickest. Excuse me, could you give me a hand up the hill, please? Oh, go on, you can have There's no way they'd manage it for real on their own, and here at the start of the journey, they're happy to ask for help. Not to, you don't have to go too far. Yeah, no, that's fine, that's good. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Hey, guys! Don't forget me! 
One in every hundred people in the UK is a wheelchair user. 17% were born with their disability. Thank you very much. Are you friendly people? Sorry? Are you friendly people? Yeah. We try making it. Well, can you give us a hand up to the hill? Whoops. <laughs> All the wheelchairs are equipped with miniature cameras to give a chair level view of what happens. You're fantastic, Stephen. What a great help. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Thank you. What a star! I know this is a really tricky bit. Whoops! This is probably why you don't see that many people in wheelchairs in this particular park. Sean, lean forward a bit, give me a bit of a hand. Thanks very much. I hope all your dreams come true. The man's green. The man's green. Oh my god. That's quite scary actually, the speed yeah. Gabby and Tania crossed their first road together before going their separate ways. They're both determined to check out Edinburgh before they go anywhere else. <laughs> Sean moves off along Prince's Street. You feel a bit like Moses in the part of the Red Sea. You know, people just so like, overcompensate getting out of your way. First road. Starbucks. Do you know what I was about to do? I was about to indicate. And then I realised, oh my god. What is that it? I can't go in there. Starbucks don't have access in all their stores, but say they're going to improve the situation. No. Okay. I really want to go in. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. All right. Good. Just bonding with my people. On your marks. Go. Hey, come back to the bed. <laughs> 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 Oh, Jesus Christ. To... That was a bit weird, that. Because you've got the hill and you've got the cobbles as well. Yeah, and it's on slant. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, that could have been a situation where you get really stuck. Mm. Did you feel unsafe as well? Did you feel that you were under pressure to get up as quick as you could? Well, I'm not under pressure to get up quickly, but I felt um, I might get trapped here or yeah. I might fall over. Sean decides to do a bit of shopping. These shops better be good. They really better be the best shops I've ever seen in the world. Thanks very much. Cheers. That's handy. It's funny. Sorry, it really is like I'm an, I'm an obstruction. You know, people really don't want to have to move out the way. They try and give me as little room as possible. I'm sure I've done the same without realising it. Excuse me, could you give me a hand, please? Yeah. Would you mind? Gabby is looking for some souvenirs, but has to ask another shopper to help her reach things. That's a bit rude. Oh, it's vanilla fudge. Sean's also having trouble with things out of reach. I can't reach the porn stuff. I'm just going to forget a music thing. I'm finding it a nightmare, though. How are you? Um, no, I'm fine, actually. But I just feel a bit freaked out, really. I, do you know what? I find, you know, the thing I'm finding really odd is the height difference. Well, you know what we just found out? Because I just in W.H. Smith. Yeah. And, like, it's, it's like people in wheelchairs aren't allowed to buy porn. You would? We can't buy porn, it's in the top shelf. Oh, and that's what I was just going to go and buy. What a shame. Yeah. You know what's amazing is I can, I, I'm absolutely positive that from your perspective, this looks like a really tiny little slope. And oh, I, no, from my perspective, I don't no, know if you can see that, but from my perspective, I know, but it's... it's like a frigging mountain. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. I'm getting nervous now. 
Oh, crack, crack. I didn't keep going, did I? One shop produces its own ramp that's kept at the ready. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. See? Ooh. Yeah, wicked. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Very interesting. I'd like to see the, the women's wear, please. In this shop, everything Gabby wants is in the basement, but she can't get there. I don't think I want to be carried down by a stranger. I'd find that really humiliating, actually. Very nice man who said he'd carry me down. Yeah. Or he'd, um, or they could bring something I saw in the window up. But the shame is, you can't get to see everything else. Oh, Tanya's still shopping, too. It's really weird. <sighs> That's too much. Her reflection in the mirror has caught her completely off guard. I don't know why that's so potent. I can't even actually really explain it. It's really potent. It's like... I just sort of burst into tears and yet there's nothing... Nothing's happened. I'm fine and I haven't... You know, it's not... It shouldn't be that shocking. I've seen myself sit down loads of times, obviously. But just really, um... Never seen myself in a wheelchair, obviously, it's just very strange. Very strange. You haven't started the meter yet, have you? Yeah, because when we get there, I'll start right off. Sean's on his way to Edinburgh Airport to catch his flight to Dublin. Gabby is starting her journey south. She's decided to plan her route and try to book help at every stage. Train companies ask wheelchair users to give at least 24 hours notice that they want to travel. If they don't, there's no guarantee there'll be a place on the train, nor any help to get on it. Result! Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call Edinburgh Buses, see yeah. what the deal is for disabled. Hi, yeah, I'm just calling because I'm trying to get to the airport. Um, I'm in a wheelchair and I'm just trying to find out um, where your buses go from and, and the availability of, of, um, of the disabled buses. Uh, it's only a 100 airport shuttle bus. It's a special bus that only goes to from the airport all day. And they're all wheelchair friendly. Oh, that's good. OK. Not all regular Edinburgh buses are accessible for wheelchairs, but certain routes, like the airport shuttle, do have ramps built in. Throughout Britain, only about 15% of buses are totally accessible, and the rest don't need to be by law until 2017. For now, every town and city is different. Either you get people looking at you like you're in the way, you get people looking at you like, for you. You see a cute guy and you kind of wink and he doesn't even notice you're alive. It's kind of like, it takes your power away, yeah. totally. Sean's ready to check in. Can you walk up the aircraft steps or do you need to be lifted on? Need to be lifted on. So that's OK, yeah? Yep, no problem. Gabby is boarding a new train where there are two dedicated places for wheelchairs. One is in first class and one in standard. Only newer types of train have to be fully accessible at the moment, and it won't be until about 2040 before every train really is wheelchair friendly. Are you able to manage up the stairs? No. Do you need to be lifted up? Yeah. I'm just concerned that I don't really want to have to be carried after this morning's embarrassment with the guy who nearly passed out from just pushing me. I don't want to be carried. A wheelchair is too wide for the aisles of a plane, so for wheelchair users, boarding is an uncomfortable and often humiliating experience. Most airports use small folding narrow chairs to either push or lift people on board. Boarding is either last in front of a whole plane load of waiting passengers or more normally first when the plane is empty. They've all left Scotland. Sean's on his way to Dublin. Gabby's on her first train. And Tanya's landing in Bristol en route for Wales. 
She has to wait for everybody else to leave the plane. I've lost my sort of go, because it's like, you know, I'm just waiting for someone to help me now. I can't do anything without somebody helping me. I really cannot go or do anything. Which kind of pisses me off, really. Sean's chair reaches the tarmac before him. really weird when we were coming into the lounge there. It just felt like everyone was looking at me. I felt like I was a delivery for a supermarket when you go in the back of a van. <laughs> it worked. It was good. It was fine. It worked. Wouldn't want to have to do it as a lifestyle. Hey, Tanya, it's Mike. How you getting on? Oh, it's been mad. Everyone's been really helpful and really, it's been really good, actually. But it is, you know, it's been really strange. Um, a massive learning curve, really. Is it harder than you thought it would be? It felt a bit uh, undignified being carried onto the plane because oh. they just had stairs, so they kind of put me in some kind of thing that you'd think you'd find in a mental home, really. Gabby, it's Mike. I remember I was saying, oh, I'll always ask someone to help me. And, um, and actually, I don't want them to. I, there, there was a guy when we got to, to um, Carlisle Station who was so nice to me that he nearly made me cry because he was so nice. And I needed help getting off the train, obviously. But, you know, during the streets, I don't want somebody to push me. I'm like, no, I'm going to bloody do it. Sean's arrived to check into his central Dublin hotel. Thanks very much. How much do we owe you? Uh, room for Hughes, please. Hughes? Yeah. OK, I'll just get you to register here. I'll get Marina to take you over here. There's a lower desk. OK, okay. OK. His room has been adapted for wheelchair users, but Lindsay explains how it could have been made even easier to use. What are the baths normally like, though, for disabled? They would have a bath seat which would stretch over. You would get your wheelchair there, transfer over onto the bath seat, and the bath seat would have steps going down so you could bump your bottom down into the bath. So this isn't... They haven't done anything here to help, have they? You should have rails in there to pull yourself, pull yourself in. Suckers. Tanya arrives at her hotel in a small town near Abercavenny. Bloody cobble. I'm just going to sit here with my wheels going around all night. OK. Let's see? So what would I do now if I didn't have anybody here with me? You just end up having to ask somebody. Yeah, but who? Do you know what I mean? Maybe if I didn't have any of you here... Tanya's hotel is a 15th century coaching inn with many different levels and steps. It's part of the amusement, it's the I can't go up those stairs. There's no way I can go up those stairs unless I have a piggy bag, which isn't going to happen. Okay. It's a piggy. It's a piggy. I have to go back, sorry. Tanya's room has a ramp up to the door, but the rest of the room hasn't been changed for wheelchair users. There we go. Come on. Hold well on. Ow. 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 There we go. Ah! We've arrived. We're safe. We're home. Gabby's Hotel in Bolton won the first AA Accessible Hotel Award. It's been designed to meet the standards of the Disability Discrimination Act that by 2004 should ensure that people with disabilities have better access to both new and old buildings. She needs to put on, put your other switches on, your lights. All the red cards are for emergency only. 
So right. be careful when you go in the bathroom, the switches are on the outside. Right, OK. Gabby's having a dry run of the specially designed facilities. So you'd probably have to push yourself further on before you put your legs in if you... Well, that's quite good, because you've got, like, three levels. And then you can lower yourself down slowly. It makes it easier on your arms. <gasps> I've just pulled the emergency cord. Oh, my God! I've just pulled the emergency cord! Get out, quick! Oh, my God! What they'll do is you Hello. Me. Sorry. No, I just pulled it by accident because it got caught in my wheel. I'm sorry. All right, bye. Sean in Dublin is finding out just how different the experience of a night out is in a wheelchair. Shall I jaywalk? Oh my god! He's off to see a band play, and the venue he's going to tries to make sure that everyone can get in, one way or another. So, do I go downstairs, or...? Yeah, normally what we do is we use the medics to get people down there. We can't put a ramp on that because it's too steep. So we use the medics and security to get you down to that level. Cool. So we just go for that, I guess, yeah? yeah. OK. With enough notice, they'll erect a platform to raise fans in wheelchairs up above the rest of the crowd. But Sean's booked too late. Yeah, the Queen of Sheba. Well, thanks very much, guys. No problem. Cheers. Yeah, we are right yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much. Okay. Gabby's night out is just beginning too at Bolton Wanderers against Berry as a guest of the Disabled Supporters Club. Bolton's 28,000 all-seater stadium opened five years ago and has more than 150 places for wheelchairs, one of the largest number in the country. Hi, sweetheart. Hello, you all right? Yeah, that's not bad. You're the friend of Perry in the house. Look in my view. Yeah. All right, I'll move. It's all right, I can't see the but he's commentating. Oh, hello, are you commentating? I'm commentating. He's just the commentator. Right, what do you mean? Well, you can commentate for me as well, because I know bugger all about the football. Well, I'll tell you what, come and sit on me now. I'll tell you what, I'll sit there. See, this is the thing. You've got to be careful that you don't all the... Yeah, the, well, not patronise. There's equ equality, and you can go too far the other way. I mean, a disabled person like myself, I'm blind. So what? Who gives a monkey's chuck? I get on with my daily life, and I don't want anything other than equality. You know, what's been what, saying... You've got to be careful, Gabby. Some people, who are some people who are disabled use that disability to get them where they shouldn't be. Anywhere you want to go in this stadium in the world, you can go. That's fantastic. Um, you know, what an amazing view, isn't it? Is it? I'm told so. It's amazing. Oh, But you know, it's, it is a nightmare. Get out of the way! Get out of the way! Well, I don't know what I'm going to do about the toilet, though. What have they got here? Nothing. No disabled. Lindsay suggested pissing into a glass. After a quiet dinner at the hotel, Tani heads back to her room. Thank you. No, you can do this. I know, but why? My wheels aren't. No. <coughs> Come back. All right. Oh, nearly, 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 nearly. I'm wheeling at the wrong time. Well done, that is exactly what you need to do. Yay! How does Sean sum up the experience so far? I do feel with the plane stuff, when they, they strapped me up in Dublin, I thought that was real Hannibal Lecter. And, um, you know, there's that thing of just because your legs aren't working, 
you know, and it's like a stupid thing, but just because your legs don't work and that, you kind of, you feel like a, you know, meat that's been moved. Hang on, here we go. Wait. It's the very end of day one, and the only time in a challenge that they're going to be allowed to regain the use of their legs. I look at it differently now. Because when I got into it yesterday, it was really light and it was really easy to manoeuvre. And I thought, wow, I'm, you know, it's really going to be easy. But it's not that. It's a psychological thing. Oh, God, so lucky. Oh, my God. How are you feeling? Lucky. Word I overuse. I don't know if I'm lucky. I'm lucky in so many ways. I'm lucky in so many ways. <sighs> Strawberry experience. <laughs> feel in this chair. I don't like the way that I'm treated. Um, you know, it's like, um, I don't want to go back out into the world in the chair, really. I felt yesterday, what, I think, honestly, one of the most extraordinary days of my life. It's something I will never, ever, ever forget. It's day two, and our celebrities are to make their way to London. Sean's in Dublin, Tan is in Abergavenny, and Gabby's in Bolton. Before they get on the move again, they're going to meet people who know what it's really like to live their lives in a wheelchair. Gabby's arranged to meet Lisa, but it's proving rather difficult to get to her. Lisa, it's Gabby. I've got a problem. The, the train never appeared, so I'm still here at um, Horwich Parkway. Sharon. How are you? How are you doing? How are you? How are you? It's about it all. Thanks for coming along. We have to kind of make people more aware of what it's like of being in a wheelchair or being on crutches or whatever the case may be. I mean, disabled is a huge word that a lot of people don't know what the meaning of it is. You can't depend on having somebody there all the time. You have to learn how to cope with life. I mean, just because you're branded with a disability, I mean, someday you're going to be on your own. Well, people, I, I'd imagine, are pretty helpful, yeah? No? No. Really? No. What about this old... You know, Irish people are the friendliest people in the world, baloney. They are, but I mean, they like to think they are. Yeah. But I mean, again, if they're helping you, they're more of a hindrance because they're getting in your way. I think in 2002, in all fairness, like, it's ridiculous having to ring a premises now to be told, yeah, we are wheelchair friendly, we've got a ramp. But I mean, unless you mention the toilets as well, yeah. You know, you have to kind of be on so, your... Because, like, I was at a gig last night and there was no um, disabled toilets. Right. So what do you do in a situation like that where you can't go? Either ask nicely to get two people to carry it. Right. Or just basically sit tight, legs crossed. To get anywhere in life with a disability, Sean, you have to be hard. And have I mean, you... You've got to warm... People with disabilities have warm hearts, but, I mean, to get where they want and to achieve their goals. I mean, their goal... I mean, Anyone can be Ryan Giggs and just kick a goal in the net, but I mean, a person with a disability just has to kick that goal extra hard if they need Ryan Giggs and they need Alan Shearer, like, at the same but time, you know? I have to point out, Sharon, they're not actually the best two players. Gabby is still not having much luck getting anywhere. There's no one there. Tanya is meeting Kevin. He's going to give her a lift in his specially adapted car to the bottom of a hill that she last climbed as a child. That's the way it works sometimes. Again and again and again, what disabled people want and need for the most part is simply consideration of their needs, like any other human being, and an environment that they can work in. Most disabled people don't, aren't employed. There are 3.3 million disabled people in this country who cannot find work. Not all of them. Um, well, I mean, we know that getting on for nearly half of them say they'd actually like to work if they were given a chance. And there's no reason why they shouldn't work. 
It's about understanding that disabled people are human beings, just like yeah. any other human being. Yeah. Gabby gives up waiting for the train and she tries to get there by bus. Hello. Do you go to Bolton bus station? Um, can I get on board? Have you got disabled access? Rachel, have you got any ideas? Oh, now that we just missed a train. Bugger. Okay. Now, isn't it breathtaking? And when I was here, there was literally nothing for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres. See, because then this does become about getting up the hill, doesn't it? It's because, I mean, I can sit where I am right now and enjoy the view. But, um... It's a metaphor for life, isn't it? <laughs> There's a hill there. Yeah. Get over it. Yeah. Do you know that it is? true. Hours. <laughs> Showing off now. I think what you need to remember as well is when you get to this point, not only is the view beautiful, mm. but when you're going back, it's all downhill. I know, isn't that and lovely? Is, is that, <laughs> if that's not part of the metaphor for life, I don't know what is. Once you get over the hill, it's all downhill from there. I'm very impressed that we both got to the top of this bit. Let me tell you, I had big reservations about that. for us and it is for you lot. <laughs> okay, this is when Tanya starts going off the side of the mountain. <laughs> Ooh. Gabby, now an hour behind schedule, calls for a cab. Hello. We need to go to a Bolton train station, please. Since the beginning of 2002, all newly licensed taxis must be wheelchair accessible. Black cabs either have built-in ramps that unfold or extendable ramps that are kept in the boot. Sean's starting the final leg of his journey to London. With those ramps, you get them for free, yeah? No, yeah. Free. You have to pay for them. And how much are they? It's about three and a half thousand pounds. It's converted for a wheelchair. Right. No government subsidy or nothing. So what made you convert it then? Well, just to get more walk. Right. Okay. Gabby finally arrives to meet Lisa. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Do you ever feel vulnerable in a chair? No, um, it's, just, it's when you're going past gangs of oh. people, isn't it? Yeah. When you're going past gangs of girls. Yeah. Yeah. Are you all right about people offering help? Yeah, I don't mind. Um, people, when they know me, they get used to me and I'll say, it, like they'll let me struggle for so long and then they know I'll ask them when you know when I've once I'm like I can't do it you know I'll say oh please one then I will you know help me sort of thing but I like trying to see if I can figure out a way to do it as well. It's funny last night in the hotel one of the porters very kindly started pushing me and I got quite defensive and I said no I can do it. Well, lots of people are nice you know <laughs> but when I'm getting on a bus it's more um, people, ordinary people that will help me on more than the bus drivers sometimes you know yeah I said to him this morning we put the ramp down and he looked at me I went pretty please. Time's up for Gabby she's got to leave to catch her train south. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> no. <laughs> really good to meet you. Tanya's about to face an unexpected problem. I've got a puncture. I've got a puncture. I've got a puncture. It's just flat. It's, look, it's not even flat. It's coming off the metal thing. Mm. Okay, what do I do? What I'd suggest you do now is get into the car and let's get the wheel off. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's a unique experience to you, perhaps, but it's something that happens to wheelchair users all the time. Okay. She's got a puncture repair kit in her bag in case of such an eventuality. And get the tyre over the edge of the rim, and the way you do that is insert the other one in now. Although she's happy to take Kevin's advice, Tanya is determined to fix it herself, whatever it takes. OK. That doesn't really want to. Mm. Ah! OK. We're going to miss our train. Uh, I don't know, but we're going to be here for ages. How often does this happen to you? 
far too often for my liking. Really? Yeah, in the most awkward place <sighs> imaginable. Mm. And then we have to catch a train. There we go. And then push this up. Oh, that comes up. Look at that. Oh, it's amazing. At last, the tyre is off and the damaged tube is out. Okay. That's I'm going to damage the tube again so you have another. <laughs> but the new tube has just rolled down the hill. I can't bear it. Oh, no, it's gone massively far. Oh, no, it's so far. Am I going to be able to get back in if I go down like this? Hello, little one. There we go. There we go. OK. We've done it. <sighs> Ow. I feel like I've cheated. I feel like having Kevin there has obviously... I mean, you know, something like that, it's all about the tricks. If I'd been by myself, I would have done it, and I really would have, and I would have made you all sit there for two hours while I did it. The deadline to reach London's Millennium Bridge by five o'clock is getting closer. Sean's arrived at Dublin Airport. And what flight is it? CD-126. Oh, it's brilliant, amaze. We've got four minutes to get to the next train. Gabby's train arrived a few minutes late, so there's not much time to make her connection. So they know we've got to get on it? Where's the lift go, then? Uh, on the underpass. Oh, right. And we have to push again up to the next lift. Ooh. Missed it. Fuck oh, Shit. Oh, they could have just waited. Tania bought her train to leave Wales. Oh, my God. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? We actually just missed a train, so we're on a later train. And you know what? There's no disabled loo. So I don't know. No. For two and a half hours, I don't know what I'm going to do, and I'm dying to go to the loo. Gabby decides she has to attempt to use the toilet, something practically impossible without being lifted up. Tanya's luckier. There is a wheelchair accessible loo on her train. Am I going to get in there? You're not coming in. One, two, three. Oh, my God! <laughs> it's not funny! Go away now. I'm going to shut the door because it's usable. Well, I'm not on the door. Yeah. We're surely be arriving at Warrington. Please remember to leave the train at Warrington. Take your personal belongings with you. And also remember... How far do you think you've got to go? I reckon I've got about, I'm, I don't know, another two hours until I'm actually going to be at the Millennium Bridge. I've got, right. to get back to, I've got to get back to London, and then we're going to try and get on a boat and see if there's a way that we can get the boat down the river, because it's such a lovely day. It'll be a really nice thing to do. Maybe that would kind of lift my spirits a little. But actually, I mean, I say that, and the whole thing's been really interesting, and, and I'm really enjoying doing it, but it's just, it's just emotionally such a roller coaster. Sean's arrived at Heathrow. He's just one of the 600 people who need help getting on and off planes every day. Usually it arrives, the wheelchair's here when the aircraft arrives, but sometimes for lift off it can take five, ten minutes. Gabby has pulled into Euston Station and is now intending to get the underground across London. Hello, do you have a tube map for the wheelchair users, please? Sean's still waiting. Is there no um, wheelchair access here? There's no lift here, so how do I get on the tube here? This plane must be getting ready to go out okay. again. Okay. At what time? About now it's time, actually. We should be off by then, though. Oh, yeah, crikey, he'll be off in the next five minutes or so. He can't get on the tube Sorry. at Euston. Sorry. That is hysterical. Sorry about the delay, but... But they're all say connection only, connection only, connection only, so you have to be on the tube already. So how do you get on the tube in the first place to make a connection? Well, it's been over 20 minutes since all the other passengers left the plane and Sean's finally on the move. Okay, so I'll go by I'll go by bus then. Bus stop B. 
Thank you very much indeed. Tarnia's train has arrived at London Paddington. Um, is Strecker? Yeah. Thank you. This okay. is a massively steep hill from my perspective. Yeah, the tricep's working. Oh, they are. It's now been 30 minutes and Sean's still not in the terminal building. God, for a matter of a couple of feet. You know that I can't walk. It's just taking forever, isn't it? Ten to three now. Have you got a ramp or anything? Yeah, I've got ramps. You want a ramp? Can then? I? It's got a disabled sign, so I presume we'll be all right. Yeah, the thing will come down. Back door. There. Thank you for. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> How do I pay him? Do I go? In? Disabled people in wheelchairs have to travel backwards everywhere. Sean's trying to get the Heathrow Express train into central London. Well, the wheelchair won't go through. <coughs> it's too small. Because they won't let people get the trolleys through. Do you work for the Express? Yes. I need to get uh, on the train. I can't get through on the wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go on the left side, yeah? Thanks very much. Tanya has reached the River Thames and is going to take a river bus downstream to the Millennium Bridge. Hiya. Oh, is it? Am I? Is there a ramp or something? Sure. I've been told I'm not allowed to do that. Is there a ramp? Uh, has to be a ramp. Is that close enough for you? Is it possible to use that ramp? I don't know. I don't even know if you've ever given yourself bumps to try that ramp. It's got so many bumps on it. Can I try it? I've got to forget Will you help me? Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah? Yeah. Wait. Keep going. No, you're doing it. I want you to do it. No, I want you to do it. Please. Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. Taxi! Sean's cab has got a few problems. So much trouble with a wheelchair in my life. What are you are? Five o'clock and nobody's here yet. Nobody said this was going to be easy. I just wonder who's going to be first. Thank you. Cheers. I can't see anybody else in a wheelchair. How are you doing time-wise? Um, I don't know my clock. I don't know. What's the clock? What's the clock? I'm oh, I'm past five. I'm past five. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. Gabby arrives on the far side of the Millennium Bridge. Oh, I am so determined. Nobody's going to help me. I'm going to bloody do the last bit for myself. Oh! Yeah, please know oh! that you got back first. It's only 10 past five. Well done. Oh, wasn't oh, it? Oh, God, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. How's this going to feel? It's going to feel amazing. So what was the most difficult thing you went through? It was just very isolating. It was an um, unbelievable two days. It was the most unbelievable two days. Such insight I've had. So here we go, your chance to get out of your wheelchair. Get out of my wheelchair? <laughs> oh, God. It's, I'm quite, it's quite, I'm quite shaky. 
are you? Yeah, I am. I'm quite shaky. It's funny because it's like I'm so light and I'm so tall. <laughs> London, here I come. Not yet, not yet. How are you? Oh my You're okay. god! We did it! Yeah, really good. I'm really so good. excited to see. I want to see Tanya! <laughs> Can I get up? Yeah, get up? Oh my god, how are you? Oh, seeing you hasn't helped. <laughs> and finally, Sean pushes his way across. Beep, beep. Your last, but well you're done. here. Yeah. Well done. How are you? Is that really hot there? It is very hot, actually. Yeah. How are you? You're right. You I've got tired. the flu. Really? Yeah. No kissing then. <laughs> well done. Well done, fella. How are you? All right. What time did you get here? Twenty past five. What time is it now? Hello. How are you? Quarter to six. Mm. I feel actually slightly hyper because I'm really excited to see everybody. I'm really excited to see Tanya and Sean. It was about um, feeling isolated, feeling alone and feeling vulnerable and a bit lost and feeling very asexual, which did my head in and just all things I wasn't expecting. You know, I think these people feel alienated enough. And I think if we, again, embrace would be too strong a word, but just to, you know, try and make them feel part of, as valid a part of society as anyone else. I had a lot of really helpful, nice people, but I also had a lot of, you know, people who just sort of... They, they kind of get annoyed that you're asking them to do things which are... Um, because you're in a chair, you need help. And they're kind of impatient and they're, they need to get on with their own stuff. And it's like, you know, I have, a, I have to sort of be very humble and ask for your help. And it would be really nice if you didn't make me feel, you know, more crap than necessary. You couldn't do anything instantly. Everything was a, took a long time. And it's not so much planning out things, it's just that... You know, you just you just have to accept that you're going to be last every time. Hence my <clears throat> very profound finishing last to prove that point. 